Lexus has finally debuted their first ever fully electric vehicle in the UX300e, and it's currently in sale in Asia, primarily in China right now. It will be released to other parts of the world, namely Western Europe and Japan, uh, within the next year as well. Unfortunately, it will not be coming to America. However, Lexus just released some new information about this, I guess, pioneer vehicle for the brand, and they're going to be doing a 1 million kilometer 10 year warranty on the battery pack on this thing. Welcome back to the channel, Luxurious Fleet. My name is Kirk, if you're new here, all I do is talk about Lexus and Toyota, and if you do not want to miss any of my upcoming electrified Lexus videos and Toyota as well, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of my electrified Lexus videos coming soon. Over at the Lexus European Newsroom, UX300e, first all-electric Lexus offers class-leading quality and a 10 year battery warranty that is unheard of first all electric lexus draws on 15 years of lexus leadership in electrification 10 year or 1 million kilometer battery warranty to heighten peace of mind amongst 300 e customers an intelligently packaged and extremely durable all electric drivetrain if you guys are not familiar with the lexus ux it's been around since late 2019 it sells actually pretty decently here in the states it's really taken off in europe as well it's offered in a two liter front wheel drive naturally aspirated variant and then a hybrid variant here in the states it's only offered an all-wheel drive in the hybrid and that gives you actually a little bit more horsepower around 40 miles per gallon and the ux is a testament of the flexibility of the T tngac platform which like the corolla the prius and maybe a couple others are based off of the tnga platform allows them to build electric vehicles based off of their non-electric counterparts so we have a newly developed lithium ion battery here it's newly developed 54.3 kilowatt hour high capacity battery which achieves 400 kilometers of range in the nedc cycle corresponding over 300 kilometers target range in the wltp cycle those mean nothing to hear in the united states i know i have a lot of viewers uh, worldwide of course that only translates to about 165 miles on the epa rating here in the united states and that's a big reason why lexus is not bringing this vehicle to the united states because they don't think it will meet the the demands of the american driving appetite and then for a lot of people it doesn't and i understand that but it still hurts a little bit that the Lexus was was originally designed for Americans and now we're getting vehicles not for Americans. The battery is located under the cabin floor and rear seat to ensure a low center of gravity. The unit has 288 cells. So battery technology is one thing, but also cooling the battery is paramount for battery longevity and of course power and range so they have sensors that monitor the voltage of each battery cell and block as well as a battery cell temperature in tandem with the car's advanced battery management system this results in maximum usable battery cell capacity and an extended driving range now many people were thinking that this was going to be liquid cooled because the lexus rival tesla does have all liquid cooled batteries lexus chose to go a different route here for many reasons they developed a battery cell air cooling system which is safer and lighter than the water cooled systems with cooled air circulating inside the battery pack stable battery output can be attained even at high speed and during repeated rapid charging we know that the quick charge rate for dc is a maximum of kilowatt 50 kilowatts and the standard AC charge is a maximum of 6.6 .6 kilowatts, much, much lower than a lot of the, the rivals out there. However, it works hand in hand with the cabin air conditioning and enhances the car's performance, its battery life, charging performance, etc. Air cooling is more reliable than water cooling. It's not always as efficient, but if you make a battery pack that is more breathable, I guess that's the best way to say that can dispel its heat in a more efficient manner with chilled air, I think it can be a very viable source. And if, if your battery chemistry doesn't get too hot, 
um, that is going to be very helpful as well. Now, they also are going to be heating the elements under each battery module, which will minimize the impact of cold weather on driving range, ensuring full power is available from the start. This is something that all EVs struggle with, is they lose massive range and efficiency when it's cold out because their batteries are cold. Well, Lexus has apparently remedied this Achilles heel of battery technology, or at least current battery technology. They do not do well in the cold. Well, they're going to put heaters on the batteries on every single module. So that's going to warm up the car, as we would call it for traditional ICE vehicles. Um, and to protect the battery, they have fitted rubber seals to protect it from water and dust. It's that makes a lot of sense, especially when you're offering a 10 year battery warranty. Now for us Americans, this number is massive, but it's also massive for people who live in the metric system. In America, this is over 600,000 miles. Very, very few people, maybe taxis out there, something like that would be able to drive that much. Now, would this vehicle be a viable taxi? It's hard to say because the quick charge rate is not that fast and the range is not that high. So it's probably best for a commuter vehicle. But the warranty covers all functional defects of the main battery and capacity degradation below 70%, provided that the owner respects regular health checks foreseen in the maintenance program. That makes sense. Of course, they don't want people to be abusing their vehicle. They want, they want the Lexus vehicle to come in for service, right? That makes sense to me. Now, the cool thing is there's, no, there's not going to be a whole lot of fluids to check at all for the battery system, but what's super important is making sure that AC, the air conditioning system, is working tip top. So maybe they have to keep that system charged maybe a little bit more often than a traditional air conditioned car because it's going to be removing a lot more heat than a traditional vehicle. So what's interesting here is that the vehicle only has a three year warranty and a five year or 100,000 kilometer on drivetrain defects. The traditional Lexus warranty is a four year 50,000 mile full vehicle warranty compared to this 3,000 so they drop a year compared to this three years so they drop a year and the five year on drivetrain defect drivetrain defects is reduced from one year so it's typically six years or 70,000 miles which 70,000 miles is a little bit more than 100,000 kilometers so the traditional warranty for some reason is reduced on this ux 300e I don't know exactly why. Maybe they're trying to balance out the 1 million kilometer service warranty on that battery, but makes me scratch my head on that one. I'm not gonna read everything about the, the motor that powers this vehicle. It is front wheel drive only. It's not gonna have an all wheel drive variant, but this motor sounds like it's very compact and very, very quiet, making it probably the quietest Lexus ever built, at least at low speeds. And how much power does this electric motor put out? Well, around 200 horsepower or 150 kilowatts. Zero to 100 kilometers is 7.5 seconds. That's probably close to about 7.2, 7.3 seconds, zero to 60 for us Americans. The UX300E is built alongside electrified hybrid models at the Lexus award-winning Kyushu plant. Of course, that's in Japan, if you didn't know. And the UX300E will be introduced select to selected markets in Europe by the end of this year. It will hit Japan early next year, so that's early 2021, and of course it's already in sale in China. And electric.co did a really good summary of the article that I just did as well, but we're not gonna read what they had to say. We're gonna read what the comment, the people down in the comments had to say, because there's a lot, I mean, that, that community over at electric.co, all they do is think about and are more inclined to EVs than my channel is focused on. So I just wanna read some comments because I feel like that adds a lot to what I've talked about today. Jan Janssen, liquid cooling just uses liquid to move heat from the source of the radiator where it's cooled with air. So uh, as we just mentioned, the UX300E is actively cooled with cooled or chilled air, refrigerated air, and not liquid cooling. If you're cooling a highly concentrated heat source like an ice engine or internal combustion engine, this often makes sense. Although heat pipes can do the same job better without the reliability issues and usually cheaper. That's why air cooling is still the best solution even for computer chips that have hot spots with very high thermal densities. 
Batteries don't have anything like that thermal density. They are huge and produce modest amounts of heat distributed, distributed uniformly. I can totally see active air cooling being the better solution. Definitely a cheaper solution, definitely a more reliable solution. And if this new battery chemistry is a little bit cooler, it doesn't run quite as hot, let's say as like Tesla's, we got ourselves potentially a fabulous electric battery technology here. BE says batteries are 90% efficient. They aren't fossil engines. The heat energy density is much lower. All they need is a big AC unit. Doggy Dog World, CATL, BYD, and others are claiming 150 or so watt hours per kilogram at the pack level with their next gen LFP. But Toyota has partnerships with CATL, with BYD, and they're going to be developing new batteries with them. Of course, they have a partnership with Panasonic as well. So they're saying this new LFP technology is within 10% of Tesla's liquid cooled packs and much, much cheaper to build. Leave it to Toyota and well, Lexus for that matter to figure out very inexpensive ways to build EVs. And that's a big part of why they don't have a ton of EVs right now. They only have maybe three. They're all available in China at the moment because in their opinion, it's not cost effective yet for it to be a, like a profitable business endeavor, I guess. And then SD Steve, as long as Alexa stands behind their battery warranty, the mechanism they use to cool the battery is less important to their customers, more power to them if forced AC is less expensive and less complex. They're saying, why Lexus cheap out? Jan Janssen, anyone who has been building high performance PCs or servers for 10 years will tell you why you want air cooling rather than liquid cooling whenever you can. It's much cheaper and much more robust. It doesn't really work for internal combustion engines because those produce a ton of heat concentrated in a tiny area, but for batteries, which are huge, heat up evenly and moderately, I can easily see it being superior. My only caveat is noise doing air cooling property. Properly with low noise is more difficult. Not necessarily because when you're talking about PC cooling, I build my own PCs. When you're talking about PC cooling, you're not using refrigerated air, you're using ambient air and that air actually heats up because it's being circulated through your case just a little bit. When you're re using refrigerated air, it's almost like taking your PC, putting it out in 30 or 40 degree weather and having it being air cooled out there, it's gonna be far, far more efficient as, as uh, compared to ambient temperature within a room like this and the PC gets hot inside the case. So refrigerated air seems to me like a no brainer, especially if you have a battery pack that has cool air running through all the cells. And then if the chemistry doesn't run that hot as it is, it's going to cool it just fine. You're just gonna to have to be very, very diligent on making sure that AC system is, is running at its peak levels, right? And I think that's what Toyota is talking about or Lexus is talking about when uh, honoring that 1 million kilometer warranty is that, that my guess is that refrigerated system just needs to be checked on. It probably doesn't need to be done a whole lot too within 10 years, uh, but probably just checked on to make sure the battery is being cooled effectively and efficiently. EVs from Lexus and Toyota here in America. The closest thing we're gonna have in probably in the next three years is going to be the RAV4 Prime, it may be a Sienna Prime. If you haven't seen my Sienna video where I talk about the Sienna Prime, go ahead and check that out. And then of course the NX450H Plus. I really see electrification uh, taking over the Lexus lineup probably four plus years out um, where you have high performance hybrids and then fully battery electric Lexus vehicles as well. In this UX300E, yes, the range is pretty low, around 165, 175, 170 miles is all. I would kill if Lexus just like flew me out to China or Europe and they're like, okay, test this car, please review it for us. I would kill for, for that to happen. I feel like this vehicle could be the pinnacle of Lexus smoothness and quietness. Yeah, that's kind of reserved for the LS right now, but and, and the ES does a hell of a job coming in a, in a close second behind the LS and maybe even the LX. LX is phenomenally smooth as well, but this thing could be even better. The only thing that's gonna hold it back is going to be road noise because the UX uses run flat tires. They're not quite as quiet as your traditional tires. But yeah, definitely smash the like button for Alexis Electrified and a lot more options coming in the future. We just have to wait, which is kind of normal if you're a Lexus fan because waiting is what we do a lot. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next video. Until next time, peace out.